This is one of the world's really great transects through the front ranges of a mountain belt. I've come to the Arve Valley in the French Alps to look at the structure along this transect and how it's been represented by geologists of the past and indeed of the present day. At the head of the Arve Valley lies the mountain resort of Chamonix, loomed over by the mountain massif of Mont Blanc. And the lower valley has a long history of farming in the shadow of impressive limestone cliffs. Nowadays, traffic races up the valley to reach the high mountains or to travel beneath them in the Mont Blanc tunnel. But long before the tunnel and in the 18th century, the region was explored by the naturalist Horace de Saussure from Geneva, an early ascensionist of Mont Blanc and recorder of geology. More on this as we go. But our starting geologist is fellow Genevois Léon Collet. He worked this ground, publishing a dramatic memoir to the geology with exceptional illustrations. And we'll follow one of his cross sections. Rockwise, we're concerned with thick interlaid limestones and marly siltstones. The limestones include a unit called the Ergonian, underlain by brown limestones and then another limestone band which is Tithonian in age. So we're dealing with Cretaceous and Jurassic rocks. And on Collet's profile, these rocks are coloured like this. And we'll be chiefly following these units, especially the bright green Ergonian. So we're going to build the cross section up, starting at the bottom of the valley and working upstream. And we'll start off at a town called Clues. Clues means narrowing the valley. And there's this really dramatic 18th century bridge crossing the Arve. But to get a good impression of the structure, I mean to come up here out of the valley and we could see that Clues, which would have been down there, is on the edge of this really spectacular big antiform. It's picked out by that white cliff forming unit which is a platform carbonate called the Ergodians Cretaceous in age and we're going to use that as our guide to structural styles as we go further up the valley. But before we leave here let's just compare this view with how it's represented by Leon Collet. Neat stuff. So let's get down into the valley and have a look at the next structures as we go up the valley. So there on that shady cliff you can see the eastern limb of the Clues anticline coming down into the trees down there. And then as we come across there's another panel of limestone, the same Ergonian limestone, repeated by a thrust. So we have the Clues anticline, the Ergonian coming over, and then that limestone repeating itself and forming the cliff line that continues along. So let's see how Collet represents that on his cross section. The Clues anticline, and there again, the Ergonian, like waves rolling in to the left, that's towards the northwest, placated Ergonian and other Cretaceous rocks. And we can follow that Ergonian further up the valley. The cliffs continue, gradually rising up to a high plateau, the Plateau Massif, up in the clouds. And tracing the Ergonian along, you can see it climb up, but then it goes right up to the top of the mountain and you can follow it all the way along. So the Ergonian forms the cliff, but look to the top, it's another patch, a nose of Ergonian. 
and Collet's sections show that he interprets this view with the lower piece of Ergonian and then the upper one thrust right on top. So we've got a repetition of the Ergonian limestone in this view. There we are, a thrust, tipped to dip downhill. Well, if you look in the valley bottom above the houses, there's another band of limestone. That's Tithonian limestone, Upper Jurassic, and it continues up the valley. But then if you're high on the hillside, there's that really dramatic fold nose, which is the Jurassic Tithonian coming around again. And this is the view from the valley. And it was from down in the valley, albeit a long time before the motorway, that de Saussure made his famous sketch. So that's the Arpeners Fold, sketched by de Saussure back in the late 18th century. It's a spectacular structure of folded Tithonian Upper Jurassic limestones that simply make a big fold pair. But this view from the valley bottom is a bit distorting. It's worth going up high to get a proper view of the fold profile. Well, a bit of a cloudy day on the Mont Blanc massif. But let's have a look at our hillside and see what those fold structures look like from this vantage point. So that's a better view. See the fold come right round like that. And now we get another part of the story because coming in from high on the right is another piece of the Tithonian limestone. So it folds up like that and has then been thrust over the top. So we've got folding and thrusting going on within that limestone layer. And then right on the top, we have the Ergonian limestone running right up and getting lost up there in the clouds. Well, a fantastic section. So how then did Collie put this section together? Let's look again at his cross section. We've seen how two thick limestone layers, the Argonian and the Tithonian, are deformed, but by different types of structures. So that green Argonian layer is repeated and the blue Tithonian folded and thrust with intervening miles and silts, light green and grey, deforming in ductile fashion. And even older rocks in brown and mauve show more folding and shearing, which we see as we track across older Jurassic strata. So the Tithonian limestone and the Argonian collectively define key beds that define the structure along this transect. And we can use those to build up an idea of the amount of shortening and how the structures link together through this multi-layer. The thick limestones are competent. They thrust and fold near concentrically and provide critical information on the overall deformation. During my PhD, I used Collet's section and interpret it in a thrusty style, published the following year. The aim is to compare shortening in the different stratigraphic levels. And this section implies almost 19 kilometers of orogenic contraction. Okay, and I took that idea a bit further to develop it, to see how the deformation linked up through the multi-layer using the Argonian at the top and the Tithonian as key beds that give us an idea of what the shortening is and then allowed the shale units between them to deform and have original thickness variations, a technique called formation area balancing. So let's have a look at uh, that cross-section. 
This section, slightly long strike, shows a similar structural style, Agonians in orange here, and restored, showing the linkage of deformation through the multilayer. I think it's an approach that's really useful for seeing how deformation works through multilayers deforming by both folding and thrusting. You can find out more about this in this short film, linked in the text below. Time now to introduce somebody else into our story. Some 200 years after de Saussure came down this valley, 40 years after Collet published his memoir, my first PhD student examined the structure of this fantastic section. His name is Alistair Welburn. He's gone on to a long career in applied geology in the energy sector. And this terrain provided a great grounding for it. So there's more going on in here than simple thrust stacking and folding. There are also normal faults that have controlled thickness variations in the strata, particularly the younger strata that lie on top of the Argonian. Here's Alistair's sketch, Argonian green, downthrown by normal faulting, like this. And that's what Alistair was looking at, the role of those early faults in controlling the contractional tectonics, how the thrust grow. So let's just follow those structures across and we can see the Agonian here has been elevated up and it forms that whaleback on the skyline thrust up through on top of itself. So how does that thrust structure relate to pre-existing normal faults? Well, let's look at Alistair's interpretation. Here's the complete sketch with the thrusts in red and normal faults buttressing and being cut by thrusts. In evolution, early normal faults, a thrust grows through and moves. Other thrusts buttress against the early faults and then more cut through. This is a great illustration of the real world complexities in thrust belts developed in multi-layers with pre-thrusting normal faulting, a really common global scenario. So normal faults controlling the location of the contractional tectonics, the thrust structures that repeat and stack up the Ogonian limestone. Although Collet didn't explore these concepts, his basic work also shows the importance of folding and its layer dependence. So this is a great natural laboratory for structural geology. Well, perhaps you can see what all the fuss is about, why this is such a fantastic transect and really accessible. So why not take a look the next time you're driving up the Arve Valley towards the Mont Blanc Massif, take a time out to look at this fantastic structure.